The next step in the design of convolutional neural networks came in the form of VGG. VGG stands for the Visual Geometry Group in Oxford and they well looked at progress in computer vision, they read the AlexNet paper and they thought well okay if AlexNet improved on Lynette by being bigger and better, well why not just make it even bigger and even better and then maybe you could improve and win more competitions. And that's exactly what happened with VGG. So let's have a look at how this looks like in detail. So let's compare. So between AlexNet and Lynette, well, the big idea is, well, you would go and add even more dense layers. Well, maybe not really because that's too expensive. Or you add more convolutions. You can do that. But then at some point you start getting tired of having to define every convolution separately. So you might as well group them into blocks. Because while for AlexNet, you know, you still have maybe a dozen or so layers and you can still write them out explicitly. Once you go to 20, 30, 40 layers, it gets quite annoying having to specify it by hand. So the key innovation in VGG in hindsight is actually this grouping into blocks which then turns into parameterizable repeated blocks that are used for computer vision. So let's look at the VGG blocks. And the first thing they had to solve, and this is a nice paper by Tissaman and Simeonian, is whether you should use fewer wide convolutions or more narrow ones. And they did a fairly comprehensive analysis and it showed that more layers of narrow convolutions were more powerful than smaller numbers of wide convolutions. This tends to be a trend overall in deep network designs that a larger number of compositions of simple functions turns out to be more expressive and more able to fit meaningful models than a small number of, well, shallower models. So in the VGG block, you basically had a bunch of 3x3 three three convolutions. If you padded them by one, it didn't change the size of the input relative to the output. And then in the end, you have max pooling of 2x2 two two with a stride of 2, which would halve the resolution. Now, if you stack several of those things together, and in the end, while well, you have the dense layers that are identical to AlexNet, well then, you get VGG. And you get actually an entire family of different such architectures simply by varying the number of such blocks that you will combine. So you get VGG 16, 19, and so on. And that's VGG. So the overall progress if you think about it, is that in Lunette, people used you know, two convolutions and pooling layers and two hidden dense units. And then in AlexNet, while well, everything became bigger and deeper, and VGG bigger and deeper still. So if we look at how this actually plays out in practice, here's a plot of you know, throughput versus accuracy. And VGG is a lot bulkier than AlexNet, so it's a lot slower to push data through. There's actually an entire family of networks. The size of the circles determines and you know, indicates how large the memory footprint is for those networks. And you can see that those are quite some behemoths. And it's clear that this probably wasn't the way how to go forward. So if you look at what followed after that, and we'll cover this in this lecture in the following one, people moved back to smaller networks, but with higher accuracy. So this is from the Gluon Model Zoo. If you want to download any of those models, you just go there and you can get the pre-trained model. 